they used to say that the mountain looked like it used to move. There is so much wildlife up here. This was a good hunting ground for our people back in the days. Since all the mining and everything happened, it kind of like chased all the animals away, disrupting the land and everything where their habitat is. I don't think we'll ever be able to encourage the caribou and that to come back in herds like that ever again, but I think if we can develop this area into such a way, like with mountain biking culture, something up here so that nobody can want to do that mining and everything up here and that. There's a book on the history of mining in the area, and the title of it is Fractured Veins and Broken Dreams. And I think it's apt because what we're talking about on Montana Mountain in this Carcross area, there's a mining stampede that happened shortly after the gold rush that's referred to as the Windy Arm Stampede. That resulted in a whole bunch of mines around this incredibly geologically complex massif that showed incredible promise in certain areas, but always those veins were fractured and then the dreams were broken. There was really nothing marketable out of it or economical, I guess would be the word. My name's Derek Crow. I'm the project manager of Single Tracks to Success. We could continue mining here, but the amount of destruction that it would take to follow those minerals in this particular geologic environment would be vast. And so people started to look around and think, what else could we do? And it was actually my wife who wrote a, a study exploring the potential of mountain bike tourism. What it revealed is what we all know now is that mountain bikers are good customers and they love to travel and they love to seek new experiences. What ended up happening is after that was published, somebody who was working for Carcross Tagish First Nation said, I like this demographic, how do we get these people here? Jane's answer was, well, let's start with some trails. She spent about a month looking for trails and ended up finding all of these remnants of this Windy Arm Stampede that really sketched out the backbone of this trail network and then took it to the First Nation and the First Nation said, well, that sounds great, but no thank you. And then she ended up having a really great idea. She said, well, what if the youth build the trail? Call it single track to success. I said, well, that'll work. But we're only gonna give them this area, this rocky area down at the bottom of the mountain. Probably thinking, well, it's probably just too tough to build trails there. But the youth rose to the challenge and mountain bikers, as we all know, love this kind of complicated terrain. It's what we're seeking all this great rock that is really unique in Western Canada, and some pretty neat dirt that we find in between to be able to pack and shape and the ways to get from rock to rock. There is like really nothing here in Carcross, to be honest. It was almost like a ghost town at some points. The only thing exciting would happen, there'd be tourists coming in, go check out the Matthew Watson store, walk around the beach, and then take pictures of the train station that's down there and be on their way kind of thing. And that was pretty much it that was happening around Carcross. Carcross was a, a passing through spot, a place where the wind blew really hard and the water came through the narrows and the caribou crossed, and that's where the name comes from. It was shortened to Carcross from Caribou Crossing simply because there was just so many caribou crossings back at that early 1900s that they didn't want to confuse it, so they gave it the name Carcross. Really from Vancouver, there's only just a few spots where you can get through these mountains. Just to the west of us is a pass called the Chilkoot Pass, which was key to the, uh, the ability of people to get in to the Yukon once gold was discovered by some Carcross locals 125 years ago, I guess. It was like a relative of mine, uh, Skookum Jim and Kate Carmack. They're the ones that like started the whole gold rush. How it actually happened, Skookum Jim went to go fill up his teacup at the creek and he found this like big nugget once they discovered that gold, it was just like a big surge of people like coming on the ferries from Skagway. They would have these First Nation packers that would pack them from the bottom of this trail named the Chilkoot Trail. 
they would have to have a thousand pounds food just to like go on the trip all the way from Skagway. That would follow um, the Watson River here all the way to Dawson. It's just north of uh, Montana Mountain here. It's so, like the beginning of the journey basically is here. At the very beginning, building recreational trails on really sacred land was seen as a clash of cultures. But what's happened is after 16 years of building trails is as a trail crew, we've created our own culture and Shane's been a big part of that. I'm Shane Wally, the OG of the trail building out here in Carcross. Been doing this for about 16 years now. My grandma, she pretty much raised me when I was a little baby and that, so she taught me like a lot about taking care of the land and how to um, work with the land. A lot of the elders back in the day thought we were just not really respecting the land. I really had to explain what we were doing up here and let them know like, yeah, we're not just up here making a mess. I had to let them know that I'm using what she taught me into what I'm building. We got to develop this land in the, a good way and keep telling them like mountain biking is a really good way to develop your land if you want to protect it. When you hear Shane talk about trails and how they affect him, it's pretty tough to, to counter that with almost any kind of argument because it's just been so good for him. I just love inviting people out to enjoy the outdoors. It's like zen, to be honest, when you come out to places like this. And I don't want to be the only one feeling like this when I come out into the forest and that. I want like urbanites that never, ever stepped out into the bush and that and getting into mountain biking and be like, oh, wow, this is so beautiful out here. I remember when I first started, we had like 20 youth working up here. And a lot of them is their first jobs and everything like that, so they kind of got a good work ethic up here, being able to want to take care of the land. I think it's pretty amazing, to be honest, having all this happening out here in Carcross. We used to say we started making trails, and then in the end we realized actually the real mission is we're making better people. Always keeping people just ahead of profit and working on transforming the lives of that next generation into the working world to basically have a better and more vibrant society. I built a career on this now, so it's providing for me to live a lifestyle that I see as pretty cool and fulfilling.